Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new video for you today. It's been a couple of months but I'm back with a beginner Zerg guide. If you're looking for a easy to do, simple build order that's safe for Zerg and it's going to net you a lot of wins in lower leagues, then this is the video for you. It's going to be very very similar to our Protoss build order that we did, which was, you know, two base charge, lot of mortal archon, very safe. Focusing in on macro, you know, we read these people online that say macro, macro, macro. This is the kind of build order that comes about because of that. And if you're new to Zerk, uh, I think it's going to be a perfect way to get you involved. I think it's going to be able to get you up until uh, Diamond League, but you know, because I'm a typically a Protoss player, I'll say I'll definitely get you up, up to Plat League if you focus on the fundamentals in this. So it's really, really important. But without further ado, let's just jump right on in. So it starts off very simply. You build a drone. And on 13 supply, you're also going to build an Overlord. Nice and simple, straightforward opener. I'm going to be very uh, in-depth and thorough with how I explain how you do the build order because I think it's very, very important. So after this Overlord, uh, you're going to build another drone on 13 to go up to 14. I'm just set setting my camera location hotkeys there, but I'm going to try and keep this as simple as possible, not look at my units. I'm just playing versus an AI to get it shown, but overall, I think this is a very strong build. So when the Overlord finishes, we're going to build two drones. Uh, we're going to rally both of them to the mineral line first, and then you're going to select one of them and send it to the natural. Okay, if that makes sense. Essentially, you split them. One goes to the main, one goes to the natural. You're going to build another drone back at home, and you're going to go 17 hatchery. This is why we built this drone, so that you're at 16 out of 16 on minerals. We're going to build two more drones. The first one is going to go rally to the gas. And the second one is going to go rally to build the spawning pool. It's a very, very simple build order. You get 16 on minerals. And the rest just goes straight into buildings. We're going to build the next worker and rally it straight onto gas. We require more minerals. And after you've rallied three workers onto gas, you're going to rally a fourth worker down to the, the uh, natural. And you're going to be set for there. Once you've done that, you want to change your rally points to the natural. This is never going to change. Uh, for a very long time at least. I will also say as well, I'm not really scouting in this game. You don't need to scout. Don't put too much pressure on it. I'm sending one of my overlords across the map, but at the start of the game, I sent it to a safe spot. And that's what you want to do as well. Because when you get better, you're going to be able to bring this in uh, and start macroing better. And, and actually scouting, seeing and reacting to what your opponent's doing and doing different build orders. But just for this beginner one, it doesn't really matter. So on 20 supply, we build an overlord. And when your two hatcheries finish, build a queen at each location and uh, two pairs of zerglings, four zerglings total, and then just straight back to droning. We're going to get zergling speed in this game, so once you have 100 gas, get that. But just drone, 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 drone. An important thing to remember is that at 30 supply, okay, so I built my last drone here, we're going to build an overlord. You need to build this so you don't get supply blocked. Once our two queens finish, we're going to start two more queens. You're probably noticing that we're not taking a third base. And the reason why, I mean, obviously this is not ideal, right? At the highest level, a third base is needed uh, and would be going down by now. But for beginners, you don't need to go for a third base. In fact, it's probably going to cost you more trying to defend it. Uh, defending two locations is much easier than defending three locations, just with how quickly everything hits. Uh, and that's why we're also going for four queens. And I don't want you to micro these queens very much. I want these queens to literally just sit in your base. Because if you have two queens in each mineral line, it's going to be very hard for you to get harassed. But throughout all of this, we're just droning, 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 making sure we're not getting supply blocked. After our, our queen in the main base finishes, so our fourth queen, we build a lair. Nice and fast. We're then going to add three gases. Throughout all of this, we're droning, droning, droning. And then, you know, scouting, whatever, you can chase it away with some zerglings. But just keep stacking injects. If you didn't know, injects can be queued in StarCraft 2. It's been this way for a long time now. Uh, but the reason we're doing this is so for later, when we're pushing in and trying to micro and whatnot, you don't have to go home and inject. I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible for you. So there we go. We've got our three gases finished. Start putting workers in. Keep building drones. You're not going to stop building drones until you're saturated on both bases. You can also go slightly above 16, uh, like I'm 17 here, because it's going to build the Hydralisk den in this case. 
Once you're at uh, enough workers, you're going to start building Zerglings. Very simple. But yeah, here's the key thing. Once the lair finishes, we chuck down the Hydralis, then we chuck down an Evo Chamber. Now the real beauty about this build is that this doesn't have to be a Hydralis then, and I'll show you other variations uh, in, after this game. So just keep injecting. Now that we've reached saturation, we're just going to build units. At this point, you know, oh, I'm floating a bunch of money. Uh, well, what I'm doing is I'm waiting for my Hydralis den to finish. I'm going to get Hydra Speed, plus one attack, bunch of Hydralisk. Spend all my money instantly. So I guess the way you can remember it is you build, you know, one round of Zerglings, Wait for your Hydralis Den to finish, and then start building Hydralis. From now on, I'm going to be trickling in a couple of Overlords, so that I don't get supply blocked with every single one of my uh, Lava you know, Inject Cycles. And then I'm also going to be spending all my money on Hydralis, and what remaining Lava I have left over, I'm going to spend on Zerglings. Okay? In general, actually, I would say it's better just to only build Zerglings at this point, just to go across the map because they're faster with reinforcements and then we're just going to go across the map and attack i mean it's at five minutes 30 we're going to take the third base because we're going to start floating a bit of money but really this third base i mean i guess it's for a bit of a transition for a bit more lava as well but this is an all-in attack you know we're not lying now now all you have to do is focus on microing at the front try your best to attack move and be very uh thoughtful with how you position your units and attack but throughout all of this, it's very important that you continue to spend your lava, okay? Microing is important, but spending your lava is more important. And you have to remember, we've been, you know, queuing up injects throughout all of this. So sure, I'm going home and looking at my injects right now. But if you don't have the APM to do that, that's fine. You're not going to run out of injects. So, you know, in this game, we're running over an AI. That's totally fine. But you're going to find that, you know, especially against like Protoss players, I would say, Going Ling Hydra is going to be a very effective strategy that's going to bust a lot of Protoss players. Because, you know, some of them might be get, being very greedy. Going like two Void Rays, but taking a third base at this time. You know, some of the more traditional builds. If you think of Mio Maker, for example, Vietnamese Zerg player, he kind of plays like this. So, there are examples of this kind of playstyle at the high level. I've just really condensed this down into a very simple... Uh, build order for, you know, beginner Zerg players, and I think that's very, very important. So, you know, the AI is going to tap out, and I'm going to show you some of the other variations, because the great thing about this build order is that you don't need to go Hydralisk. You can actually do whatever you'd like. One thing I will say just quickly, you know, I cut back and started playing again. Uh, we've just started our lair. If you want to be ultra safe, you can build two more pairs of Zerglings right now, uh, and a spore crawler in each of your mineral lines. If you're finding that you're dying to harassment, you know, banshees, oracles, just at 3 minutes 30, it's very expensive, yes, but it doesn't really matter too much. Build an, uh, a spore crawler in each of your mineral lines. If you find that you're dying to hellions, adepts, this kind of thing, uh, build two more pairs of zerglings, go up to eight, and you'll be very, very happy. So in this game, instead of going hydralisk, we're actually going to go... For Mutalisk. And you're probably thinking, uh, Mutalisk, that's an interesting one. I would recommend this one for, you know, versus Zerg. I think Mutalisk are really strong versus Zerg. Especially two base Mutalisk. But it can work at, you know, at the lower leagues in, in any matchup. And really, if you feel like building Mutalisk, you can do it. If you feel like building Hydralisk, you can do it. Heck, if you want to go Nidus Swarm Host, you can do the exact same thing. Just when your lair finishes, uh, you add the Nidus, you add the Infestation Pit. It's very, very simple. Now, the key difference when you go Mutalisk, though, and this is how you have to be a bit reactive, is because Spire takes so long to build, we uh, actually can't spend our money. So all this lava that's sitting around, you actually want to be spending on more Zerglings this time, if that makes sense. And I'm also going to take a quicker third base. So essentially all I'm doing is I'm spending all of my lava up until the Spire is actually going to be close to finishing. So you see, compared to the Hydralis game, we actually have a lot more Zerglings. And this is where, you know, being a bit fluid, reactive, comes in. For the most part, spending your money is the most important thing. Okay, that's the most important thing. As long as you get up to 16 workers 
on the minerals in each base, fully saturate, saturated gases, you're going to be fine. So, Spire finishes, we immediately build 8 or 10 Mutalisk, spent all our money, keep building some Overlords, it's very important, don't get supply blocked. Uh, and then once again, we're just going to go across the map and attack. Now in this game, I'm just going to, you know, aim move the front. But if you become more confident at this, you know, let's say you're in Platinum Diamond, you want to attack the front with the Zerglings while sending the Mutalisk into the main base, right? There's lots of variations here. This is just a beginner template for you. To really get used to Zerg, its macro mechanics, injects, uh, it's a build order that keeps you safe. So what I'm going to do with every single one of the lava rounds is I'm going to build as many Mutalisk as I can, and then with the remaining lava, I build Zerglings. See, it's very, very simple. And this is a technique that you're going to learn uh, for every build order that you do as Zerg. Oftentimes it's build as many roaches or ravages as possible, and then flood with Zerglings. Build as many Mulisk, flood with Zerglings. So I hope that makes a lot of sense. Once again, we are playing against the AI, but I think this will be a really successful build order for you, and it's nice and safe. Like I said, you're stuck on two bases, but you're doing this for a reason. You're doing it so you can easily, safely, without thinking, without scouting, without worrying about dying to crazy stuff. Um, you know, get your economy up and going, okay? So, so that's why I'm really suggesting this kind of two base style. It's not ideal. It's not perfect. It is not the best, most optimal style. You're not going to see Serral doing this. Obviously not. Uh, but that's not the point of this build order. So I've got one final variation that I'm going to show you. And honestly, I think this is probably the strongest variation, if I'm being entirely honest. So once again, starting the lair, starting out gases. But instead of waiting for our lair to finish, we're going to add a Roach Warren. We're going to add the Evo. And the great thing about this is, you know, the Roach Warren can be finished before the lair finishes. Meaning that we don't have to build, you know, a round of Zerglings instead. This time we can just go straight into Roaches. The reason why, you know, you're probably wondering, oh, why not, why get the lair, you know? Well, the lair is actually very, very useful. You can get Roach Speed. Uh, and I just want to make this build order as flexible as possible. So that you can do whatever style you want. Just keep stacking up those injects. And as soon as my roach run is about to finish, I would also say very, you have to be very careful with roaches because of, you know, their cheapness uh, to build a lot of overlords in advance, you know? So one thing to keep in mind is uh, when you're getting ready just before you're about to do a bunch of, uh, a bunch of building of any unit as Zerg, build a bunch of overlords to, you know, prepare the buffer supply buffer so layer finishes we get roach speed straight away we started producing roaches keep going on the roach production uh, i do this a bit differently so that i only build roaches at this point and then once i move out onto the map i only build circlings but it's very very straightforward you'll find that you're spending your money so effectively so efficiently this time that you're not going to actually be able to afford a third base so, you know, this is an all-in. Like, there's no lying about it. This is all-in. But it's going to net you a lot of wins. You know, seriously. If you macro this properly, if you control it properly, if you use two queens in each mineral line to keep you safe, build the spore crawler if you need to, you're going to net yourself a lot of wins. The reason why this variation, I would say, is the strongest is because it has ravages. And ravages are nuts. It also looks like you have the most units, you know. Uh, I mean, roaches are just great units. And Ravages are even better. So there we go, we walk, morph in a bunch of Ravages, and then we go attack. Remember, you don't need to go home inject during this time because you've been queuing it up. But make sure you're tapping your hatchery key, seeing if you have lava available to, you know, morph in any more units. I just checked right there, right? I'm going to constantly look back at my hatchery and keep warping in units. And the great thing with this is, you know, you don't even have to look. Like, you don't have to actually process whether or not you have lava. You can just press the hatchery hotkey very quickly, press the hotkey for lava, press the hotkey for roach. It's nice and simple. And there you go. Got another big victory. So I hope you guys have really enjoyed this build order. Uh, obviously, I'm a Protoss player, but I do like off-racing a Zerg. And coming up with ways 
just to think about improving for you know lower levels because you know you often hear and maybe i'll make a response to you know a video that came out recently online about you know is macro that important we hear you know online just macro 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 but what does that really mean so i think really me trying to distill it out into build orders that are very simple it's going to be very powerful i hope you've really enjoyed this video uh peace out guys enjoy